All right, um, all right, let's get it. What's up, everybody? We're gonna be doing a coach you with my mans. So let's get to work. All right. All right, Willix. This is a really good Willix game already off the bat. You got Fenrir. So animation wise right so you have fender that you completely counter but it but it actually works both ways right because as a willix you want to go blink and he counters you right in that aspect because if i mean if he bites you and pulls you under tower you're guaranteed dead so it's interesting so usually you think okay i'm a willix versus fan this is an easy game but it is not always that easy um another thing too versus thoth something you can already think about is that you can catch his dash really easy because you pretty much if you ever auto him right he has, it's on you to flip whenever you want and him to try to time that with his dash, right? So yeah, those are little things that you already think about. What rank are you, by the way? Let me ask you all the juicy questions. <laughs> gold, gold. Gold? Uh, gold three, I think. And how long have you been playing MOBAs for? I've only ever played Smite. I've kind of been on and off for uh, two years or so now. Two years? And you never played a MOBA before Smite? No, never. No. Cool, cool. What games did you come from? COD, mostly. COD? Okay, okay. Yeah. Morgan Le Fay. So I don't know if you know about this interaction, but in in your ult, you're knock up immune and knock back immune. So versus Morgan Le Fay, you just press four and run at her. Yeah, I didn't even know that. I just tried it. Yeah. For sure, for sure. All right, let's go, let's go, let's move into this game. I always like to talk a little bit about drafts, just because it's something that's very overlooked, although it's very, very important. So I like it. you're thinking about what relics, you know, what should I go? Yeah, beads is fine. Honestly, this game, right? Like, cause so this is the, the thought process between blink and beads. Um, blink is an enabler for a Willix. Like you feel pretty bad if you don't go blink on a Willix, but there is times in Smite where you cannot physically play the game. Like, right? and this is one of them, right? Fenrir bite, you can't play. Naja ult, you can't play. Meaning you're guaranteed to die if you get caught. And there's two ways to get caught. So I actually agree with your beads here. Although I'm crazy and would have went blink. Regardless, I would have just said I have really good positioning. But so you could still go blink, right? But the way you play this game now with blink is that you can't go on Naja if Hera or, or Freya are near, right? And you can't go on Fenrir. You have to wait for Fenrir to go in. So very like, you know, it's a different play style, completely changes how you play the game. My boy Lucky Temple, like sort of four months, really appreciate it. So you're going Transcendence, a little bit slower than Joan's Wrath. So I would say go Joan's here. Why? Why? Why do you think I would say go Joan's? The early game, good day, I guess. Exactly. So uh, you're playing, like, you have a fast pace versus Fenrir, right? Because if you go Trans, how often can you ult this Fenrir? Not a lot, right? But you and you have the counter matchup, so it, I would say it feels a little weird to have a good counter matchup and then not not capitalize by getting high CD to punish him. You know what I mean? With transcendence, by the time you get your your finish stacks, your your CD like he will be already close to like beads and ages or beads and blink. So that that's one of the things you can, the way you can look at it there. So I think flip is still the best. Uh, three used to be the best season a couple seasons ago, only because of the way uh, how long it takes to clear. But your two is better. So what you do is you auto from behind it, the side minion. Then you auto the big one. Then you flip. It clears the side. There's one mini left and the big. You kill the mini, and then by the time you kill the mini, the big is using his his ability. So you can just walk it out and with that extended range. But the three is fine, honestly. It's like close enough, but the two is better. Oh, yeah, makes sense. Okay. That was beautiful, though. I, you, the way you auto canceled it. Yeah, that was happy. Everything was perfect there. I don't know why it looks so choppy, right? Perfect. I like that you didn't flip there. Conserve mana. And either way, he's gonna. You're dragging it out. Flips to the other side. 
Beautiful. Nice flip. I so the, the, I, I I don't mind the flip, but I prefer you flip on archers here. So reason being is archers do the most damage and their range, right? So that's OP in terms of fighting. So if you clear these and then they, you, whatever, let's say you, you they go on you after you clear this, you're going to have this whole wave helping you. And plus you are you, have, you already have insane lane advantage here. And the thing about clearing archers comparing to melees, right, is that this Morgan Le Fay, when she comes here, right, what is she going to do? Throw spells on the wave. If you're on the archers, she has to make a decision. Throw spells on you or the wave. And if she chooses you, you're going to have full wave advantage on them, and it's going to be hard for them to kill you. So it's something, a little thing that you could think about there. Because here you give her the chance to hit the archer, the melees too, with both spells. I think Shard could have maybe allowed you to flip him, but I think he still lives either way. So I don't mind holding Shard here. What's up, Victor? No worry, it's like a new thing, so for sure it's a little different. I like that, the reposition. Beautiful. Beautiful. Insane early pressure. Nice. Nice. I don't think you popped that other health pot. Okay. Just because you're I, you're, you already have I, and you're going to be in the jungle for like the next at least 20 seconds, right? Because you're going to go for this camp, meaning you'll get that region back. I do like the multi pot though, right? Because you're definitely going to need this MP5 if they contest this. Something small, but it adds up. Yeah. Whoop is down. Who's the best target here? <laughs> I said Nature just because he's lower at this point and but it's a, so it's the Freya. Reason being is that the Naja has survivability, right? In between the Sash and the coin toss, those are both give some sort of survivability. While the Freya the Freya um are just use whoop, right? So that means she has nothing. The only difference is Freya has beads here, but Freya is still the best target here. Naja is fine though. I mean, either one is fine. This one's just going to be a little bit harder. He also has green buff, right? So more HP. Also, he has, I think he should have sentinels. So more HP and prods. Nice. It's okay. Good pressure. Add a way to auto both down the pipe because you could auto sides. Nice back. A lot of people at your rank would have just kept walking around left jungle. I like I like the ward. Mana pot would have been nice too. So one thing about the ward here early is that all right, I think mana pot is better. I'm gonna tell you why. Mana pot so you're gonna need mana, right, to fight. Although this uh, tier two trans gives you some MP5 and I gives you MP5. If you wanna spam and farm efficiently, you're gonna you're gonna need the extra mana. And the reason you don't need a ward at this point is that you, you're like, you kind of know where everyone is, right? You know, these two guys are here. You know, this guy's going to show up mid and you know where the jungler is because he's kind of mirroring you, right? You know, jungle is somewhere here because he can't be here because there's no point of being here. So he's somewhere here. So you can conserve this ward and invest it in a mana pot to aggressively farm. Just another option, another way to think about it. Beautiful on time for the speed. So you get two minute duration on time for max. Perfect. Beautiful. The way you cleared that was, bro, you don't look like a gold player. I'll just say that. Literally, off the first two minutes of watching you play, I feel like you're playing like a Diamond Masters already. I'm almost about gold, but yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Contesting mid camps. I like this. Go on him. Exactly. Beautiful. Beautiful. That was beautiful. Exactly. Keep the pace up. So you just killed their Fender. One, one second come. He's right here. So obviously. And then blue's coming up. So you want to gank and then go to blue. If the gank doesn't work, blue's guaranteed. Do you feel like this was the best route? Yeah, 100%. I mean, after watching you a few times. Nice. Nice knock up. Beautiful. Had a way to be patient. Exactly. 
Straight to that blue is probably over this wave, I would say. I don't think I'd go for that blue, which is really stupid. No, no worries. But this is it's still fine. I, I don't mind you taxing it. Yeah, all right, so you go to your own. That's okay. I mean, this was free, but sometimes... Some, all right, look, sometimes invading can be taxing. So what do I mean by that, right? This is... So the, you, do you know about Invader's Curse? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, then let's go, let's XP. Yeah, let's go, let's XP, exactly. So... This route here, boom, boom, is actually more than, you know, going here, here. It's actually slower, right? Because then you're, you're going all the way here to get less when you can just do this, come here, go back, and then have a free gank left. So sometimes, you know, the, it, it, it might not be the right play to invade. So it's, so it's just something to think about, you know. I want your subconscious constantly thinking about what is the best play. Um, but this, this time I would have invaded blue just because it's so free, right? If, if you didn't kill Fenrir here, okay, I kind of agree with you just going to this one because Fenrir might be already pulling it and it's kind of a waste of time. But since you kill Fenrir here, I think it is the right play to invade the blue. Almost trans. This is like a perfect early game for relics. You're really happy about the start. I think pretty sure you get trans off this. So here I would have thought about how much gold I need for trans, right? And then that's one camp. So I would have cleared this backed. Don't pick up the speed. Come out, get this speed, have more duration, have full trans. You're on map forever. But I don't mind this. This is just a little bit, a little, a little bit less efficient, but still fine. Level 6 spike on Willix is really strong. 3 levels in flip is insane damage. So here you definitely want to back, right? Because you have 1500, you want this trans stack to start getting the stacks out already. Okay. So think about this, right? As crazy as it sounds, is that imagine you just cleared this, you backed, where would you be on the map? You'd be like around here, right? With transcendence, probably. And with that being said, look where, look where you would be set up for this counter gank here with trans stacked. So sometimes, you know, you could be greedy on XP, but sometimes, it, yeah, it's fine. Uh, it's just like a, you know, A and B, two sides of the coin type thing. You're still really happy with the start. Fenrir used ult, right? So how do you punish this Fenrir? You know he was on left because he just ganked and killed. And he used Fenrir because they said ultimate is down. Or I think I used, you saw it from visuals. So biggest thing, right? So you got these beads, right? To play aggressive on the fen. So when he, you know, ults you, you have something to fight back with. You, playing these camps right here as he just cleared this, probably back and coming this way. Because you know this is up, right? Guaranteed because he was here. Yeah. So playing aggressive here would be the right play. All right, he shows here, so that means this is up. So you have gank and or this camp. Nice. Out of way to not use your jump. Beautiful knock up. Beautiful. Beautiful. Perfectly played. Out of way to check those backs. It would have been good to ward that. I don't, I don't like this gank for a couple reasons. For one, I mean, you're not losing too much resources, but you don't have ult, right? And these mid camps are up. I prefer you just secure the mid camps, but maybe, maybe you kill here. You got beats, so I ended up being pretty okay. And shell. Got a way to hold your beads. So I'm just trying to give you like as many A and B options, so your brain is always like thinking about what you could be doing, because that's how you improve when you're just playing by yourself. Good blue. What what buff is coming up soon? Red? Uh, no, yeah. Nope. What's oh, one? No. What buff on their side is coming up soon? 
Uh, they're yellow and red. May yeah, you're right, but that's way way later. Their blues coming up later, right? How do I know this? Because remember, you you cleared your blue right after killing this Hera, right? And Fenrir was dead at that point, so I know their blue is coming up right after ours as the, as a delayed spawn. And there's also some things you can always take notes of on in terms of like buff timers. Yeah. Enemy missing right. You see? And I don't mind you not invading it. I just want you to know that it's there and you, that was an option. Just so just in case like the fence shows anywhere, you, you know where to be. I don't mind that back. That's a great back, by the way, because you see that the Agni's not in position, right? To come over for the double camps. And now you back for a better spike. He's, he, he doesn't show up. All right, now you take it. I mean, it is what it is. Beautiful. So the, do the same thing you were doing in the early game here. So when you flip it, just auto can auto three again, just because it's such high value in terms of clear to reset your auto chain. I like this group. Enemy missing middle. I do like two ult. Or oh, do you know how to do that? Two ult. So you don't put a level in your three at level eight. Oh, isn't holding the point. Yeah, yeah, hold point. Yeah. And Wiggs, I think it's really high value just because of how much the CD lowers on the ult. Although the three is a great ability, and it scales really well. Out of mana. This is a good gank option. You see Naja on the late rotation. Let's see how you play this. Hold jump is perfect. Nice. Good. So I don't mind the three. I think it was good, a good attempt. But I think here, as soon as she kind of reacts, which is fine. Like usually, player as you rank up from here. You're going to see players react more to minimap, right? Because it pings you right here. Bing! Because the archers are seeing you. So there's vision on you. So good players are going to react, right? So how do you do this? So you just go walk up. You got, you got to play the, the whoop here. And you have beads to play it. So I, like, I would walk up to her. Try to hit her. If she gets a really quick whoop off, then, then you pre-beads it. And then it. But if she doesn't, you flip. And then she's guaranteed to start running this way, right? Which gives you the knock-up uh, angle. But either way, it's finally misses. I'm going for Good play from her. Look for the top, maybe. Nice. Look for the auto. Out of way to guide in between. I don't mind not the no flip there. Nice. Be patient. He has no he has no uh, no no mana, so you you capitalize on getting this. Yeah. This is a little bit hard. You're not too scared here. You're not too scared. You don't need to panic or anything. What is the most damage here? Out of everyone around you. There's three gods around you. What is the highest damage around you? Freya, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so once this guy starts hitting his gumballs on you, you're like, okay, I need to reposition. So let's see how we play. Nice beats. Nice three immediately. But I think you might die. You look for a flip. Nice. Yeah. Shard. That's all. You're dead. Yeah, I should have shard and I don't shard. Yeah. No, but even then, I think you're still dead. Yeah. I think the only way to play this better is, is I think you panicked your jump, right? Because here you don't have to jump because you're pre-beads, right? You still got, you're still cleansed for a while. And he got a double taunt and Freya gumballs right now, right? So where is your best jump? It's either over this wall or just hold it until you get into tower. Because then he hits a sick whoop on you. And, even, and let's say, for example, if you... Jump over this wall right here and, and hold it. Who's the only person that can come over, right? Fenrir. And then you have ult for that. You got shard, flip. Like, you can literally probably kill him uh, if he chases past that. And and I would have used the... And this is hindsight, right? But I would have used the information that Fenrir has such low mana. Remember when we talked about it here? To, to my advantage, looking to jump over the wall, knowing that he's the only person that can get over it. But either way, I think this was played pretty well. Good try on the flip there. It's good to look, exactly, I like that, that you're looking at what killed you, who had the damage there, you know, you're downloading information in your head. So, what, what, what are you watching here? 
uh, as you're dead, right? I know you looked at your. What do you? What is? What is important to look at here? The good question. Uh, well, health. My the, the, the big fan, right? right? So, so your timing, right? Your timing where he is, right? So you're gonna see. Did he back yet? No, he's still going back there. Okay, every second he's not backing. You're happy about this. He's still not backing. He's still not backing. Meaning, when you come out of map here, he, now he's probably backing, right? And now, where is he coming? And what doesn't he have? His ult. So, like, I'm literally running from here, here, and I'm looking somewhere here to fight him. Right. And that's just, you know, always using all the knowledge that's in front of you, right? A lot of people are just like, AFK, oh, I died. Okay, I'm just going to do nothing. No, there's always more to do. Yeah, I would three this and then one straight to his back comes. Agni has pressure too, meaning Morgan Le Fay couldn't have rotated. And the way I'm telling you to play here um, is, is, is solely because you have the counter matchup, right? Because usually you're not going to run it down into his mouth at backhands off that. But because you have the counter matchup, it is good to do so. Nice little rotation. Nice jump. Beautiful. So he reganks, meaning this, all this is up off the regank here. Oh, you got Hydras, this is a huge, huge spike for you. I feel like I wouldn't have mind you to upgrade your beads there. Just because it's such high value. Nice Left is your best gank here. I don't mind you doing green though. You're getting juicy farmed. Good reaction to hearing the green, obviously the, the little sound cue. But I think left would have been a really big gank here just because he's contesting pro. Oh, he made it even easier. He's running at him. Najah's coming. You have beads in 11. That's big whoop. This guy is playing great whoops. Don't mind that jump. Nice knock up. Beautiful. Nice flip. Fenner's right. Spend her ult. Gold. gold definitely is the right call. Here. here here would be good shard value. You can probably kill his non shot with shard. If she doesn't contest. If he doesn't contest, you play yeah, just left clicks. I like that you go on him because you actually have kill threat. I don't mind getting out right away. I think I would have tried fighting this Freya. Because remember Fenrir just used ult right, right? And then he's back somewhere here, coming like this, and then Hera's here. So if Freya's contesting, she's putting herself in a bad spot just to try to get it. And you have shard value here, right? So, like, why not use it? You know what I mean? You're going to back either way, grab Link after this. And, that, that like, like, shard increases so much value, like, around level 12. Because if you think about it, right, how much are your spells doing now compared to, like, level 3, 4, right? Now your spells are doing, what, 400, 500? And you're resetting your CD by, like, you know, like, 3 seconds. Like, that, that DPS increase is... I, like obnoxious on Freya. If you literally flip, d d a flip three shard one flip three, he's dead, guaranteed. That even without all. So you're still looking for it. I like this. You look for the Naja. He slowed. Nice knock up. Beautiful. Out of way to out of way to insta flip there. That's a lot of things that you know. Willix is a lot of Willix is always you know greed for double flip. No, insta flip is really good too, depending on the situation. Yo, Uncle Randy, thanks for the two months, bro. Appreciate oh, you, man. Retreat is correct. Although you do have beads an ult in 10 and he has no ults. If you remember, if you got that information here. So this might not be a retreat call. I think it might be a fight call. Right. So you look for it. Nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. Shard. Beautiful. Yeah, one thing that I'm noticing is just shard. You, you want to just shard because... 
what is better than sh uh, not sharding? Sharding, right? Like even even like you just want to use it, and even if it has low value, fuck it, you used it and you learn, you know. But I know shard sometimes is kind of hard to, you know, it's one of the newer things in Smite right now, so completely understand. I really like this gank, right? Because you could have done speed red, which is natural, but like you coming for this gank because he's kind of low. Another thing is that this guy is worth a lot, right? Like look at the levels. Like this guy is not worth too much anymore. This guy is worth a little bit less. This guy has been killing this Raijin, so he is worth a lot. I like that you skipped speed red there. It's good heads up play. My boy Grimothy with a 10 months. Welcome back, OG. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Fender shows left. Here. All right. Right here. I love that you're tabbing. All right. You see how that flash, Hera flashed here? Did you see? Did you peep that? Fender yeah. flashes here on this good ward that you dropped. This is, this is automatic gank for me. But you see, like... How obviously this is hindsight. We're pausing it, you know, doing all these things. But you see how fast I perceive the information to make a decision off of it. Like that's what you want to be, just what you want to be doing constantly. Like, get information and react faster than they can react, right? Because as soon as you literally see Fenrir here, Hero shows bottom right, right here. I V line this way. Either way, either way, it's gonna be a successful gank. Why? Because this might be up. You're gonna get the tower, and you might kill the Hera, and you know Fenrir has no way to react to it. So it's already it's a good play guaranteed. Now Josh shows two, so that's double information. I'm slashing this way. He's probably gonna show somewhere here. This is a crazy play, but I like it. Okay, did you see what you could have done better there? So no, so as soon as you hit this knockup, right? This just just flip one, flip auto immediately. He has no reaction time because the Hydra's proc is gonna be huge. Yeah. And then you flip this way, left click him, get on your mount, you take one tower shot maximum. Makes sense. Now you gotta be careful. You had to ult that. So you, you were in panic mode for a second there, right? You made a really aggressive play and then you and then you went panic mode because tower was on you. No need to. Uh right here you you kinda you you went for an aggressive play. I don't mind it, he's super low. Beautiful bomb bomb. You, you messed up a little bit, but we already talked about it. And it was actually like so little mess up, right? Because he he lived with one HP, which forced you to try to flip, right? Because now you just walk out here. Yeah. And then and then whatever you end up killing him, you're forced to beads. Now you have to think, right? There's no need to panic. Who can be here and when can they be here, right? It's Fen Fenrir and Aja, right? So as I'm beadsing. I, I don't jump I don't jump that even though you wouldn't have took an extra tower shot but either way because now you have no buttons right now you only have a four button um, but that's fine you think you end up taking one more tower shot nope okay so this guy shows right so what are you gonna do look at him and you know he has to jump on you right he has to cut the distance but he probably has beats if you ult his jump he has no damage right and then you can flip his brutalize and then he's forced to ult and then you can put on the juke shoes and try to work it but because you're in panic mode and le and get out of mo get out mode. You, you leave yourself vulnerable. No worries. Everything else is played really well. What will make you a more consistent player is when you get in low HP, you never get into panic mode. You're always... The way I like to do it is the lower HP I am, the more calm I am about what I'm going to do. You know what I mean? Although it's obviously super hard, right? Like the more pressure there is for you to make the right play. But if you stay calm in the lower HP, the, the more, the better and more accurate your plays are going to be. So no, you went brawlers. I don't mind the brawlers, telekines. Right, let's look at that build. Let's look at their builds here. Always a fray, I think. Yeah. Telekines, gem, Fenrir 2, Serrate is coming in. It's good value, no doubt. But the way I'm looking at this is I'm 8 and 2, top net worth in the game. Is this item going to push you over the top or is this item going to stabilize you, right? It's more of a counter item. I don't mind it. But when we're thinking about rank, right, you're in gold right now. You're obviously the best player in this lobby. Like, get you know, I think Crusher enables you for a nice, like, be like late game build. Yeah. Um, 
Also, Serrated puts you in a nice late game build. Blood Forge, I mean, you're killing people. You have eight kills in 13 minutes. I mean, you, you, at this point, you're going to get Blood Forge in the next two minutes, right? Another way you can think about it. Um, you can go a lot of ways right here. I think Crusher would have been the best um, just because it rounds out your build, right? Let's say you can go you go Crusher here, then you go Serrated into Blood Forge. You have 40% pen, insane power, kill reset, life steal. Um, you got to, you know, anything. You could like I think Blood Force Rated and Crusher are items you should have thought about. But I don't mind the the brawlers. It is a good counter pick a uh, counter item versus them. I just want you to have options. You got more friends, right? Better move those feet now. Fenner against right, they kill Athena. If you're gonna try to help Agni here, I like this. I don't mind you playing this patient. You have no relics. You, you know Fenrir was kind of right side though. Fenrir shows. Brawlers is getting buffed though, so this will definitely feel better. Yeah, I normally go crush if it's just no healing and then into both orders. So another thing, alright, so I, I want you to think about this. So I know that they do have healing like we just talked about. What was that three healing? Uh, three of them are healing. And we're going to favor with, from ult, but it's very little. Is how much are they healing, right? That's another question. It's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a bit. That's what I would say. I would say it's like maybe like at one out of ten, maybe like a three, right? That they're healing, maybe three or four. It's no hell, no afro, nothing, nothing crazy. Yeah, Naja too, but it's not even that much because she's low level. So you have to ask yourself: Does my team need the counter healing, or does my team need them need me to carry? So when you look here and then you look here, the answer reveals itself, right? Because now you're three items deep, right? And when these breastplates start coming out that everybody's building, your, your build is hurting, right? You got 10% pen versus 100 prots. You're, you're only, you're, I mean, you do have good, you have flat pen now. So you're shredding, what, 25 prots? Yeah, it's not too, yeah, it's not enough. Especially this Fenrir that is, goes like breastplate or something, then your build is cooked. But he's going to rate it, so you still feel pretty good about this. This is a great gank, by the way. Why is this a great gank? Outside of you having the positioning already on him. Uh, just try to think deeper and just try to think and if you come up with nothing no worries I mean the uh, cooldown buffs up blue could be up uh, yeah, I'll that. no no worries so it's low risk right why why is it low risk let's go back who's showing mid here Fenrir, Fenrir. who who else could be on this right side maybe Morgan Le Fay, but I doubt it right so yeah. wh when you're coming for this gank you have no bees, right? And you, so you're scared of this guy, this guy. This guy shows here. This guy is still worth a lot, a good amount of gold. This is a low, this is a low risk, high reward gank here. And what another thing is, gold isn't up yet. So this is a perfect. You might not have even thought about it that deep, but it is a perfect gank. Also, the route taking, right? If you if you angle at him like this, it does give him some time to to dip. You know what I mean. So I like that you went high here, and then three people show. So, what should you be thinking already as you're going for this gank? And if you come up with nothing, don't worry. Nothing there. Okay, no worries. This gank has to be quick, right? Because right. these guys are coming this way or this way, and if they do come this way, you have nothing to fight it, right? So this has to be quick and out. And that's good to have. That's good to think about before you go into a gank, because if you're thinking that already, and the and the and and the hero gets to about here, you know it's time to dip. You know what I mean? If you're not thinking about that preemptively, and you're like, okay, I need to kill hero, you might see red, which is when you make mistakes. You know, having that underlying you know thought or subconscious in the background saying, okay, this has to be quick. Nice. Could have been a little bit cleaner. The only thing that could have been cleaner here is your autos are already doing a lot, right? So here you hit a beautiful three. I, I flip right here. And that's the difference between the greatest of Willix players and the good ones. It's it's not about, you know, everybody knows how to left click, left click, flip, you know, knock up, knock up from behind, knock up from the side. It's about using your immunity frames to perfection. So here it would have been per perfect. I'll, I'll, I know it doesn't matter, right? Because, like, I mean, she's going to die either way. But it will matter as you start to rank up and see better and better players. Now, let's take them all. Enemy missing left. 
this camp is a little scary, would you say? Three, yeah, were, three were showing. Level. Yeah, all were missing. So they either went left or right. You have no information. You don't know right now. So I would, well, you know what I would do? I would creep this wall, war low, and then just be, buy time. So let me tell you another thing about macro here, right? So let's say you come here, right? You ward this. They show here as three, trying to gank you. You back up. Why is it good? Three of them just missed out on. On, exactly they're not farming they're not getting xp and you're you just killed their hera you 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 got information on all three of them you don't have beads so this is high value time right because three of them are coming right not farming not getting xp not setting up for gold fury not playing their strong side and then you are you're not gonna die because you know they're there and then on top of that you already got the hera kill so if you look at the net worth graph and xp graph if they if they were to be here it, it's a swing up for you guys So they didn't come this way, thank God. You were definitely like, I don't give a fuck, bro. I'm going to this blue buff. Yeah. <laughs> but now you know they're setting up for gold, right? Because they weren't coming right side, so there must be left side. So that you know, there you are. And so you gotta go over right away. I don't mind you switching to CD. I like that. You have two plays here. What are your two plays? Loop high, go in from the bottom, I guess. One way there. Uh, so you could push mid or rotate to this fighter. Your two or your two plays here. The archers might die, but I don't think so. So pushing mid isn't bad because tier one has insane value in terms of positioning on the map. Fenner jumps. He dashes. You know he's full committing. Nice, beautiful. Get on your mount. I like the jump. I would be patient on that Aegis. Oh. Yeah, I it's all good. It's I saw the intention. The intention is all that matters. You see, all right, this is the way that you can coach yourself, right? Mechanics are something that you're going to mess up on, right? Decision making is something that you can fix. Mechanics is something that is going to come with time and, and pressing buttons. So never be hard on yourself about mechanics because those are things that just come. Decision making is something you can be hard on, right? Because like, okay, I, I wanted to flip there. It didn't come out, but I, but you know, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Because some people are hard on themselves with the mechanics and that that's useless, right? You're either going to press the buttons or you're not. Like being angry about your, to yourself, it doesn't, you're not going to get better like that. You know what I mean? So I, I and also I think you... Um, did you mistime that? Because the two has a lengthy time you can flip. I mean, dude, you're only two years. You've only been playing this game for two years. You're playing out of, in, in first MOBA. You're you're very impressive. So serrated is big spike here. You should really get into crystal healing. Your stress level is very high. Your team has you're very you're good with the two in terms of patience. Yeah, most of the time. I think that's me. It's perfect. Yeah, but... Farming route. They didn't get gold, so you're happy about that. You're still really strong. This Freya gank is good because it enables gold fury. She's kind of over committing. I think left is still a good gank. Fenner ends up. He didn't end up seeing you. Play the taunt. Nice knock up. Nice flip. I don't want to conserve the ult there. Very smart. But I think you're playing too patient there, though. That was such a free pick. Like, you played it so perfect, but you you wanted to. So, like, what's the reason of holding your ult here, right? It's it's to cons it's to have more resources. But if you have more resources for no reason, then it doesn't matter, right? So you want to you wanna capitalize on the fact that you didn't need to use ult to kill this fender by running everyone else down, right? So, like, as soon as I don't ult for this Fenrir kill, I'm thinking blood. I'm, I'm looking for blood, right? Because I want to use this ult. I have Totem CD. I have 30% CD. I want to use this ult. Whether it's to grab someone or to just literally run at them and literally have hit for, like, 300 damage and be at 2.2 attack speed. They get that kill, beautiful. You got beads. This guy is very killable with your steroid. Wait for the knockup. All right, all right. One thing I'm noticing with your Willix is you you like to three from from like just for damage here. I think he. I mean, this guy's dead either way, right? But the way I'm looking at this gank is that he's he's taunted, right? So I'm just gonna get positioning on him rather than just three in front of him, right? Hold that spell. There's no need to use it here. 
because I saw you do it here. So the only time I ever three from the front is obviously if I need the damage or if I, if I need a flip, right? Because your three is considered a, an attack for a flip. So yeah. if I just need a way out or immunity frames, I look to three someone. But beautiful either way. And this is free gold. I don't mind you ulting here. Right. Just, definitely something I never do. Yeah, so the reason you ult here is just because this gold is free. And when it's free, it means you just want to clear it as fast as possible so you can get back on map in terms of XP. Yeah, I agree with that call. Greetings to you. You could have ganked left here, right? Yeah. So as I'm finishing this goal, Fury, this Freya either disrespects you or respects you here, right? Why? Because there's three dead heroes right. So that means she's alone and she knows it. So is she gonna disrespect you? I I check it. So what I mean by check it, it means I'm gonna stand here. I'm gonna say, okay, are you gonna come for this wave? And she does. And a lot of people will until you get to the higher, higher, higher ranks. You know what I mean? Because she's going to legit disrespect here showing up to this wave. She even showed up to the Gold Fury. What a savage. And if you kill her, why is it so good, right? Because if you kill her, that means Friendner has to come here to cover and you get this whole wave. So you kill her, 18 and a half, whole wave, 18 three quarters. Fenrir has to come cover, although he wants to get all these camps. And, and then if he does cover, you have the complete counterplay on him, right? In terms of you have beads, you have ult, you're stronger than him. And, and, it, and it drags their whole map this way when they want to be playing this way. Serrated, so huge spike. We're strong as hell now. You're playing coming straight to Pyro. I don't mind that. That's that's a team player. That's the way you should be playing. Oh, I think I just straight up in him. Only. You in? That's fine. <laughs> just straight up miss playing. Oh, wait. I don't. Nah, it's not even there. It's not here yet. It's, it's in a second. I'm pretty sure. It, yeah, it's for no reason. Okay, you come back around, you know, fence around. You go for this. No worries. Four levels off and I die. And the hero shield's fat. So, there was a lot of things in this play, right? And it, I mean, you know it, right? Like, sometimes you make bad... Everybody makes bad plays. Being accountable is first. Second is figuring out what you could have done better. Um, you have it all so you're accountable. You know that you made a mistake and that's normal So let's look at how we could have done this better, right? So what what there, there's a huge red flag in this play and Let me let me you tell me what it is here right here. What 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 could you do better right here? Blink in to reserve No one no, I don't know. So I'm, I'm gonna give it to you. So you're four, right? It, you don't need the knockup. And biggest thing biggest thing here is that you just finished the rated spike, right? Meaning when you press four your damage is ridiculous on left clicks. Like your left clicks are hitting infinitely harder than your flip and your three. Your flip is for immunity frames and, and root and your knockup is to re catch back up. So you needed to change your mindset on, your, on the way you're playing a Willix right now because you got serrated now, right? You have serrated. So now you no longer play, oh, I'm trying to knock you up to ult you because you don't need that. Now you need your, like, especially with Sahara, like, you press 4 here, and I'm blinking on her auto, auto. She eventually is going to have to polymorph that long-ass animation. I flip, then she's going to have to ult her feet. But it doesn't matter because I'm knock, knock up immune in my ult. And you're just running her down, and she has no counterplay. It only gets sticky because of the way you're thinking to play a Willix at this point in the game. You see how many autos you got off? Like, think about if they were... In have, you read, have you read a Willix ult at this, at this point in the game? No, no, I don't know the numbers on it, no. Off the top of my head. Don't worry. I'm about to show you how broken this shit is. <laughs> so you're level 4. 50 power. So a whole item. More, more than a whole item. And 65% attack speed. 
Right. So you you would be at probably if you ulted here, you'd probably be at two point like two point attack speed, with hitting for three hundred and like twenty. So the DPS is insane at that point with your just your ult. Yeah, first come alive. Yeah. But but I agree. The way you were playing earlier in the game was correct, right? But fifty percent attack speed, only like twenty power. Yeah, you want to look for the grab, right? Because two hundred power is worth more. But here, right? Look how low the power is scaling. Three fifty, or seventy percent attack, sixty five percent attack speed, and fifty power. You know what I mean? It's just a, the kit changes, and that's the beauty of a Willix. Yo, my boy, hot ham water with the two months protein shake with the prime, my boys, man, appreciate you guys. All goats in the chat. And you might have been able to live there if you flipped, insta flipped. Oh. You, you, you know you could flip off one, right? Your one. Definitely. Okay, perfect. Yeah, bro, you have a lot. You you know a lot for how new you are, because two years is literally new in MOBA. Terms. I must have put more hours into watching YouTube than I, uh, than I do actually play the game. That's actually how, you, that's how I started when I played, I, so I watched Dota tournaments before I even played it because I didn't have a computer. And then by the time I touched the game, I was already like thinking 10 steps ahead of the, like, you know, people at my level. Yeah, I just hate being bad at games. I just try to get good at another I am good. 100% bro, that's that competitive man, so keeps us going. That was a sick dash. Oh, Agni's cooking, man. Oh, that bomb. So now, what what are we looking to do, right quick? Uh, what is our next move, guaranteed? Set up for FG, isn't it? I mean, well, macro wise, yes, but for you, for your own spike. Okay, uh, by a jungle line. Exactly. Oh, yeah, just oh, getting eyes. It's sometimes it's as simple as that. It's like, yo, okay, my play for the next 40, 50 seconds is getting eye. So you probably need, you know, speed green back. Oh, you're chilling. So let's see if you do that. I really see above this patch with the Aaron Dye buff. I wouldn't say it's hand in hand, but yeah, I mean, I guess if you look at it like that, every assassin got buffed. On my way. So here, here, I think you're just back. You agree? Because. Yeah, yeah, you get your eye upgrade, you get upgraded beads, and then either way, no no Oni, no Pyro yet. This tier 1 doesn't matter too much at 21 minutes, you know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes you, you can get caught up in like defending stuff that you know you shouldn't defend. He's looking for the time. Yeah, fuck it. It's a really long fight. Stand up. No yeah, yeah, this is the gold fight. I know, I know it, and I'm just, I don't want to go in, I don't want to do it, but the whole team's there. And Exactly, and I feel this. This is this is this, this is the mobile life right here. I like your repositioning. So, right. what do you feel like you could have done better here? I don't know. I was trying to blink behind him for the knock up, but uh, obviously he messed that one up. Just be pinging him out, I guess. So, do you feel like you gave him a chance to react? Cause, cause you have the complete counter on him. You know what I mean? You so the only time you're ever scared of this guy is when your beads are down. When your beads are up, it's mathematically impossible for him to kill you unless you mess up. So with that being said, you gotta play aggressive on this guy. This guy shows in the jungle. I'm I'm immediately blinking on him. You go for it. That's fine. Oh, the the ult's killing you. Yeah, and it's all good. I'm sure after this game, you're going to be ulting faster. Cause I'll tell you right here where I'm ulting. Blink. I missed an... Oh, I'm ulting immediately. E e even, not, not, e not even to grab him. I mean, if I grab him, better. But just because I know it's about to be a full trade session. And if you pop your ult, not only do you get more life steal from Serrated and more power and all the, every, all the extra we talked about, but you're just going to out-trade him on left clicks. And as soon as he brutalizes, which is the only way he can finally kill you, you flip it. And those are we already talked about it. One of those fights that is just the worst, right? Because you have that twenty spike on this fan, but you're not, you can't, you don't even use it, you know? Because if you have either, it just becomes so much easier. And, th and this fight is worth a lot, low key, in terms of like them coming back. 
Now you have no beads, no blinks, so the fight's a little bit harder. You're playing from the outside. This is good positioning. Good try. Good poly from that guy. Another thing you could do a lot more um, with, with a Willix, when you have Transcendence, spam your mount. Mount, unmount, mount, unmount, mount, unmount, because it's just a mind game. If they, because most of Willixes, they stay on their mount, then they jump on you, It's and it becomes so easy to read. Like, I know when there's a Willix is under mount, he's going to jump away or going to jump into me. You know, I know what he's going to do. If you're constantly getting on and off your mount, and you have the mana sustain to do it, it becomes really hard to read. Like, is he going to jump? Is he going to get off? Is he going to blink on me? You know, it's a lot of question marks instead of just knowing, you know, what he's going to do. The jump. So this game is getting sticky because you guys are a ramming. They're going FG pyro. Okay, okay, you don't give a sh you don't care about pyro. You probably just stick around, watch them do it, and then if they go FG, then you can test. Man, I'll show on that ward. A little backward, beautiful. And you got the sentry part, you're the only one warding. You should de sentry that though. I don't think you saw it. Play tight in. So what you can do, all right, so from a, from a jungler perspective, you see how you just, you're ending up mid and being in front of all of them a lot. Just just let your team 4v5 them or whatever, and then spread the map out as an assassin. Like if you go here, here, they're gonna have to send two people here. As soon as they send two people here, you have you have a you, you have a winning matchup. Then you just back up. So you can drag them around the map. You know what I mean? Right now you're getting dragged around. You're getting like they're five men mid and you just show up mid. Like just come here, clear this, clear this, clear this. They're gonna have to send Fenrir, maybe Freya. As soon as they do, you you make the decision, do I wanna fight this or I back up? But it's good because you're moving them around instead of just fighting five v five, which they're very strong at, you know what I mean? Yeah. You guys pull this, okay? This is a crazy pool. You don't know, it zero information pool. Morgan Lafay shows. Now you just come in at this point. Yeah, you try to time it with a flip. Happy, nice. You can look for more. Yeah, play the flank on this. Play the flank on this. Don't get impatient. You have blink angle. Nice flip. Beautiful reposition. This is still a good fight. Look for a three here. Nice, nice. Beads. It's all good. You're still strong here. You're still strong here with your steroid. You're, you got him. You were really forced on jumping there. I'm sure you saw that. You were really locked in on trying to <coughs> up down with the jump. You could just get off and start left clicking, especially when. So on. So remember, serrated. I told you you can start pressing four and running at people. I you can just start left clicking. You don't even have to flip. You use flip differently and three differently at that point. Because on I spike, you have, you're have you at, what, 1.85 attack speed with 339 power FG in the jungle, serrated proc. Like, you're just juicy left clicks. Unfortunate. Watch the sash. Fenner's around. Get on your mount. Ward. You see, if you ward right here, you get all the info and you can make a clear decision. Hera does end up showing himself on the wave, so you end up being, you can make a better one. I like the jump. Flip! Insta flip there. I don't mind Heartseeker, but do you? So what? What? So compare Heartseeker and Bloodforge for me. What? What? What do you think is the difference? I mean, I, here Bloodforge probably gets way more value. I'm getting the majority of the kills for my team. I should just be having the Bloodforge. Exactly. Exactly. Plus, it's it's more life steal, right? So when you pop four. You're getting that serrated life steal. You're getting that blood forge life steal. Heart seeker, I would get like if, if this Naja is becoming a problem. You know what I mean? But it's like Naja, it's an assassin. Doesn't have high base HP. I mean, he has good HP just based off his items. But you're only getting heart seeker value proc on this guy and maybe this guy a little bit. But blood forge just becomes ends up being similar to more damage and life steal and a blood you know and a shield. They're going oni. 
You got Heart Seeker now. You got no beads. Still a pretty hard fight. You need a really good flank. This is all you like. Like here, you're you're almost dead there, right? Because yeah. at this point, when you have no blink, no beads, you're gonna play the outside of the fight, right? So the outside of the fight is not here right now, right? It's more here, because here you don't have any info, and that's the fastest way out of base for them. So Fenrir could be there, which he ends up being. If he jumps on you, he, you might be dead. <clears throat> Reposition, Ajal. Take your time. Take yeah, out of way to be patient. Really good. Okay, Fenrir shows. You have to give him some. You have to respect him here. As soon as he shows here, you have to like ward immediately, right? And then back up because now you have info on him. You know he's on the right side flank, and you still have no beat, so you have to give him respect. Nice. I don't wait a word. That was perfect. Still, I still think you're kind of you're. I don't like where you're standing. You agree? Like yeah, it's still too far. Up. Yeah, yeah, too far up. Like the Athena is still right next to you, and this hair is about to cast on you. Like if this Naja just happens to sash you, this fight is blown wide open. Nice jukes. How do we be patient? Patience. Patience is virtue. Patience is virtue. Good patience. Good patience. All right. All right. So out, of way, out of way to strafe away from that. Still a hard fight. I'm pretty sure you die here. Let's watch. Fenner went on the right gym. They ended up working out. Nice blink. Beautiful. Beautiful sidestep. That I right, after I kill that Freya, I'm pressing jump four and I'm running at everyone with my eyes closed. Eyes closed is very important. You got you wipe them either way. Beautiful. Beautiful team fight. That, that like that that type of team fight feels so good because you know you had no resources, right? No beads versus comp is a death sentence, but you were so patient. And I mean, I, I felt I felt like you you were patient until you weren't on that Freya jump. But I think you know Fenrir went on the Raijin for some reason. But if the Fenrir goes on you, I think you end up dying there. But I think the fight still won for you guys, so it ended up being okay. Easy, easy to use the ult more just for the, the stuff. The damage, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's hard sometimes, you know, because it looks so pretty when you all and you gravity surge someone. Nice taunt. We try. Yeah, this is looking sketchy. All right. But here I stay. Because Fenner is coming and you can help this guy. And Fenner has his two spells to kill this Athena that he's going to need it, right? Because she's like 250 physical prots. You have all four, and even if even if he beats it, you get his beads and run away. You're a happy man. So I just sit here. I see the Fenrir coming. I'm like, this guy has no damage. This Naja is not gonna do nothing to Athena. He needs more help. So I sit around, sit around. He blinks. You say, if you Athena, I don't mind it honestly. You, I, I would have just fished for the beads, but I think it's fine. The fuck, the fuck. Is that what that means? Yeah. The fuck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you got fire blink. Upgraded beads. So sometimes re okay, so I definitely prio upgraded beads over fire blink. Do you agree? Yeah. The, yeah the C D is so good on her, it's just that they're not more immunity frames, you know what I mean? And not only that, um fire blink sometimes can get sticky with the Willix, right? Because you're trying to find that good positioning for the knockup, which opens up your whole fight, over just trying to get, you know, three hundred damage off with your fire blink. Just something to think about. Okay, this guy's left. They're pulling Oracles, Omega Law. They play Bastion. Oh, you're clearing out right side map, upgraded beads. I like this, yeah. Just play your timing. I would have warded here. I would have looked for a double sentry. So you have two uh, two ways to play the map. Like sentry here and then maybe sentry like somewhere like higher. And you know this is your angle, right? And you know everybody's going to be playing EFG. So I've been a nice play. CD is still high value. Yeah, I like that. It, nice. Jump blink. It's fine. You can play patient. Beautiful. Donsky. Still should be done. I don't wait. Look, literally what you just did right now, people in masters don't do. 
the reposition knowing that they're all co like coming across and repositioning is entirely the right play what's up kyle thanks for the six months appreciate you man like the reason you were so patient is the reason i think you're about to wipe them right now definitely be popping that ult though yeah i could never do it Nice. Oh, so I oh, hit there. I yeah. Hit uh, yes. I think he reacted and backstepped. Because right here, if you pre beads, if you ult and then pre beads, you're killing, I think, all five there. Right here. I always hold my ult for a knock which is so stupid. Especially in this matchup. I think the way you look at it, too, is that you are your only knock up, right? Plus Fenner jump. So, like, it's. It's kind of a, like this game is more straightforward in the fact that you just hold to go into the fight, right? While in some other fights, like repositioning someone so far back in a team fight is actually super high value compared to just having the steroid. So, you know, that's a beautiful thing about a Willix is that she's very different throughout all team fights, all matchups, all comps, you know, compared to Arachne, I guess you'd say. Like, just she's going to do the same shit every time. Still in a huge spike. You guys kind of traded. All right. What what, did, what what actives did you guys get in that left that you remember? Yeah, no. Um, oh, I honestly don't remember. Uh, did it Hera beats oh, Aegis. Yeah, exactly. Aegis. So that's your prio this this fight, right? Like you you know that if you blink, if you, if you if you just get on top of her and flip while you're ulted in three, immediately pops. So it's just something to keep in mind, you know. So you know you have a target. It makes your your game a little easier. All right, another thing, this ward is probably going to be sentried, right? So why not put it in a spot that it might not be, like right here? Like, you get me? Because this is like guaranteed, like, I mean, maybe not because, you know, people don't ward. But most of the time, people people walk in this way, they're going to sentry here. So if you ward it here, it gets so much backline information. Makes sense. Out of way, yeah. You push the wave, get info here. You're gonna get more info here. And reposition. You don't want to lose your beats to this Nasha or fan early. You're backing. Okay, you yeah, stop back. I don't mind it. Fenner. Yeah, I think this back is a little crazy, but that's, that, that happens to the best of us in terms of ranked. You know, people back, people. Then people just randomly fight. It's kind of hard to read. Nice. Two kills. You know, this fight is good. Nice. Nice. Good job. Globs are hurting. Add a, add a way to reposition behind the totems there. You're fine. Beautiful. Beautiful. Even though like it wasn't as clean as you'd like, like it was still well thought out. Everything was execute, executed. You get should get EFG here. Shove right. Get a couple birds here. Yeah, mid. What could you be doing here as soon as you get this mid bird? After you get this mid bird, what what is, what should be your priority? I mean, I focus on left lane, going for the left tower, but but they're spawning. So what what can you do? So one so one thing you could do here is you have serrated, right? Just come over here to the speed and just left click it. Don't use any spells. Left click, left click, left click. Plus EFG uh, region, you'll be full health. And you know they're coming out of base, and this is a win potential for you guys, right? Because if you win one more fight, this game's over. So you don't, you know, people like organically just want to take all the, all the phoenixes, right? But you don't really have to. If you just come here, sustain, and then wait here with a sentry, which you still have, which is good. Um, you you wipe them, the game's over, and you know they're low on relics. So Fenrir looks to engage. Might be dead. What is the next best play you could do right here? There's one play, and it's so small that you might you might not know it. I don't. Uh, just sentry here. Sentry, of course, yeah, that's obvious. Yeah, so stupid. Because it's just so OP, right? If you if you sentry here, you and they say they have a ward. Okay, now this fight becomes a little more scary, right? Because now you know they're all funneling in, and not and not this guy's twenty percent. This guy is gonna be like pretty low too. You know the fight is different. You but if you sentry, they have no vision. You can position here and be like, "Oh, wait for one of the carries to walk out, right?" So the first thing I would do if that was me is I'm centering there, make sure they have no vision, and I'm left clicking this camp in the corner because I know that if they come in on Athena, I don't care. I I need my right. I don't have beads, so I need a really good, like opening. 
So now this fight's kind of scary, but I like that blink. I like it a lot. Beautiful. And now you want to run these guys. We have steroid. Three seconds on the steroid. Nice jump. Bro, look at that auto, bro. This dude disappeared. 639 from being on the steroid. Your flip does like probably like 400 or 500. And think about in the time that you auto twice, you're flipping once. You know what I mean? So the damage is so different. You look for another one. I like that. Nice three. You have to play. You have to play. Yeah, yeah. Play spaced. And you know this is done. You got no beads. You have no ult. The right play. You got two birds. You still have EFG. What's up, Zen? How you doing, baby? 3k pot. You're a happy man. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And right, this is the, the, the juicy of juicy spikes here. So I'll give you an alternate thing too, right? So let's say this game goes a bit longer, right? And you're, you have, uh, you have your 3k, uh, I mean, your 3k is still running here. So what you could do is you could swap out, uh, heart seeker here for BF. So let's say you have like 1800 gold after like the next siege or whatever happens, you guys get gold tier one left, maybe one more Phoenix. And then you back up cause you, they lost a fight or whatever. Th that's always an option, right? Sell get, because you already have the 40% pen with the, with, with the three K. So you're not getting value from the 10% the pen. And then you, you know, your BF would just give you an insane amount of value. Yeah. It's just an option late game. I, I, yeah. I've never even thought about selling them with the three K for. It's never even crossed my mind. Let's get it. All right, so you're super strong. At this point, you don't really need to be hitting minions. You need to be... Now what you're doing is you're positioning yourself for a pick. So, like, how do you do this, right? Yeah, I think popping a 3k pot, depending on what the scenario is later, is value. Um, so here, like, okay, so you know they're going to be shoving waves here and here, right? You have EFG. I'm probably like sitting like somewhere around here maybe and starting a ward, right? Because this ward is the only thing that's giving you some some, some sort of information. So I'm kind of like sneaking around corners here, right? And then and then using my wards because they have to set up this way somewhere here, right? Yeah. And you don't want to use your time because at this point you one shot anyone you touch. So you don't want to run into this guy first. Like I would be rapping here, right? Like try to wrap here and then ward and look for vision. Look for the guy, the back line, because right now you're blind to their back line. He gets popped. Okay. Fenner's super late. I imagine you were here. We'll make sure they get to the you can see one kill. Nice. Two. You're running it down. Once you see two. Yeah. Beautiful. Boom. I press four here and just kill that guy. You see how four left click is a kill while three all is, is, is a chance, right? You're hoping he doesn't have beads. But you still got him. GG's, GG's, bro. You're playing, you're playing really well for your rank, bro. Like, I, I don't know. I don't understand how you're in that rank. <laughs> oh, you yeah, know hell's real question mark yeah. <laughs> yeah no you're playing great bro like honestly i i, I see i can see you being a masters in no time Brilliant. thank you for that i was so so helpful like, you think of shit i don't even cross it doesn't even cross my mind thank you you already know man it was a pleasure to coach you bro you got a janice uh p profile picture you're a man of culture okay so thank you you already know my man much love man hope to see you again bro see you around have a good stream thank you take care